Hi, my name is Colby. And my name is Bridget, and we're this year's co-presidents. I've loved my three years here at Exide, and some of my favorite memories are Spirit Weeks and our inspirational guest speakers. I love their pep assemblies and how much fun the Exide community is. Hi there, my name is Kristen Rose and I'm the proud principal of Eckstein Middle School. Thank you for tuning in as a prospective student or family to learn about our wonderful school here at Eckstein. This is my fifth year at Eckstein. I was an assistant principal for two years before coming, becoming the principal at Eckstein three years ago. And I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to share our school with you. And uh, while we all wish we could be together as we normally do in the month of January for a prospective student night, we greet you in our historic auditorium and tell you about our school and have student led tours uh, due to the pandemic. Of course, we're not able to do that this year, but I'm hoping that this presentation is going to tell a nice story of who we are at Eckstein, what we're focused on and how we're going to be supporting your student in their three years here. I can tell you as a parent of an Eckstein student myself who has recently been through the transition uh, to middle school with my own student, uh, yours will be greeted here uh, with a welcoming environment and warmth and care, uh, academic focused and um, a sense of community for all the students as they come to us. So thank you again for joining us and showing interest in our school. And uh, here we go uh, with our presentation. You've already heard a welcome from our ASB presidents and myself. For the rest of this presentation, we're going to introduce our school and programs to you, inclusive of all of our departments and uh, sixth grade teaching staff. Uh, we will also introduce our special education program as well as our English language learner program. Uh, you'll hear about the transition to middle school and welcome activities that we have planned uh, for our new Eckstein Eagles. We will introduce our sports program to you as well as ASB and other activities that we offer. We'll give you a quick virtual tour uh, with some photos of various uh, places around our building and on our campus. You'll hear from some students about their experience at Eckstein. And finally, you will get a welcome from our PTSA president and uh, she will introduce to you ways that you can get involved as a parent here at Eckstein. As far as our objectives, we hope you walk away from this presentation uh, with a better understanding and feeling for our school community, understand what our program offerings are, to get a sense and learn how we're going to be taking care of your student, We want to share, of course, some experiences of current students with you, get a quick look at our building and the physical layout, and then also get a chance uh, to meet virtually our sixth grade teacher team and hear their many passions for the content areas in which they teach. While we have many school goals at Eckstein Middle School, I wanted to share four of our priority goals. The first is to create and maintain a warm, welcoming environment for all of our students. One where they feel nurtured, seen, heard, respected each and every day when they enter and depart our school building. We're also centered on anti-racism as a school. And this is everything from looking critically at the structures that we have in place, uh, in addition to professional development for our educators on being culturally responsive in their classroom each and every day, to critically looking at literature that we're putting in front of students and creating avenues for conversation, not just with staff, uh, but with students as well uh, in our classroom environment. And it also goes into the parent realm as well. Our PTSA has recently created a DEI community or committee, DEI committee, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, committee, and they are doing this all important work as well. Student engagement is another priority area for us as a school, and this is delivering on relevant real world application daily in students' classrooms, uh, strategies, discourse, inquiry based, a collaborative learning environment for our students and also embedding social emotional learning into all that we are doing here at Eckstein as well and having a, a daily place for it in our student lives. 
we'll speak more to that here as we get through the slides. And then finally, relationships are key to everything that we do. They're at the center and we wanna have strong relationships, staff to staff, staff to students, staff with parents, uh, and uh, with our community partners in PTSA as well. So I just can't speak highly enough about the community that we're continuing to build here at Eckstein Middle School. And finally, for this opening portion of our presentation, I just wanted to note our commitments to our students that we're focused on at Eckstein. Uh, each student will be known, nurtured, and challenged under our care. Each student will be given opportunities to actively engage in achieving their full potential. Our school environment will foster creative problem solving. And our school will provide an atmosphere to guide each student in becoming a healthy, confident, resilient, and responsible world citizen that's prepared for high school and beyond. Hey, future Eagles. My name is Mr. Wires, and we're super excited that you're going to be joining us next year. Um, I'm currently the eighth grade house administrator, but next year when eighth graders go by and move on to high school, I will be greeting you, the new incoming sixth graders. We're super excited to have you joining us. Um, if you have any questions at all about Eckstein or what it's like um, joining or what to expect for next year as we move into that transition from fifth grade into sixth grade for you, you can reach out to me. My email is actually going to be located right up over there on the screen. So if you see that mjwires at seattleschools.org, right up over there, you can um, go and reach out to me and I'll be able to answer any questions. Uh, a little bit about me, this is my eighth year at Eckstein. I was the um, seventh and eighth grade or a seventh and eighth grade social studies teacher. Some of your older brothers or sisters might recognize me as perhaps maybe one of their former teachers. Um, but I moved up to administration now and I'm super excited to, uh, again, just greet the sixth grade house coming in next year. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Take care. Bye. Middle school is set up in two semesters. Semester one that begins in September when you start school and the other second semester begins at the end of January. Students are required to take six classes each semester. Those include your core curriculum classes, such as language arts, social studies, math, and science. And then you'll take PE and technology, which are one semester long each. So what does this sixth grade schedule really look like? Here's a sample of a schedule that would be in place for the entire year. You'd start your day with a homeroom class. Then first period, you might have a social studies class. Second period, you'd go to language arts. Third period, you'd have an elective from one that you've selected in your sign-up sheet. Then you might head to lunch, followed by a fourth period class where during the first semester, you might have PE or tech, and during the second semester, you'd have the other one. You'd go on to a fifth period math class and finish up the day with science. Please know that this is just a sample and that the schedule could be a completely different one depending on your individual needs. Hi there, Principal Rose here again to talk about math offerings and placement. And I apologize for the very dense text on this slide, but math placement is probably the number one question we get in uh, a student's transition from elementary school to middle school with us. So I wanted to be very, very clear on how this works. At Eckstein, we offer six different math courses. We offer grade level math, which is math six, math seven, and then math eight. Uh, for seventh grade students who have not had an opportunity to accelerate in the past in math, we do offer a compacted math seven and eight course for students who are looking for some extra challenge and wish to accelerate in their math programming. We also offer algebra one and geometry. So some important items of note, and some of these are going to be new to parents who have had previous students with us over the course of their middle school experience that I really want to highlight and be clear around. All students in Seattle Public Schools enroll in their next math course in sequence. 
And this is consistent across all middle schools this year. And per district policy, there's no longer an opportunity for parents to opt their students into a higher math placement, which essentially means I want them to skip this math level and go on to the next. That is a process that's no longer uh, acceptable, accepted in our school district. This procedure of not skipping math uh, courses and having students go in sequence also applies to students who are identified by uh, Seattle schools as highly capable or as an advanced learner. So this is for all students. Advanced learners and HCC students who have previously accelerated at elementary school do get to keep on their current track, um, which is already an accelerated track. So they get to uh, keep at that acceleration. They don't have to go back to grade level math. Uh, but for anybody new wanting to skip over courses or whatnot, uh, that is no longer allowed. Uh, students have to go through their math course in sequence. And I just commented that if a student was accelerated, they'll uh, continue with that accelerated sequence. So if a student does want to eventually accelerate at the middle school, there's two options that we can offer. The first is to take the math 7-8 uh, compacted course, and that's for seventh graders, as I previously mentioned. And new this year, students are uh, going to be allowed to double up on math courses in their eighth grade year, taking math 8 and algebra 1 concurrently. And one of those extra math classes would replace an elective, so I want to be clear on that as well. And as you heard earlier in the presentation, students get two different electives each semester. And then just to illuminate this transition and give a couple of examples, a student that took fifth grade math at the elementary school in fifth grade would then come to us next math course in sequence into uh, math six in the sixth grade. And uh, a student, if they had already accelerated in elementary school and they were in sixth grade math as a fifth grade student, then they would start with us in math seven uh, as a sixth grader. And same thing, if your student um, was HCC in elementary school and they were taking math seven as uh, an elementary school fifth grader, then they would start with us here in math eight and then go on seventh grade year to algebra one, and then their eighth grade course uh, would be geometry. Hi, I'm Miss Stone. Hi, I'm Miss Beard. And I'm Mr. Miller. In sixth grade history, we study the ancient world, including Egypt, Africa, India, China, Greece, Rome, and much more. One of my favorite things about teaching this subject is that we get to do the work of actual historians and archeologists. We look at artifacts and make conclusions about the past. One of my favorite units is the early Africa unit. We talk about all these complicated societies from a long part of African history, including Great Zimbabwe, like you can see behind me, Songhai and Benin and Aksum and the Zanzibar coast. And we learn so much about things that for me, I didn't know about myself. So this is the one where I learned the most and that's why I like it the most. We also make a con connections between learning all this history and we think about how do people learn about these societies? What artifacts do we look at and where are those artifacts now? Why are so many African artifacts in Europe and the United States and not in Africa? And I love the ancient Greece and ancient Rome units. Um, what you might not know is the geography of Greece is fascinating, but also during this time we learn about the rise of democracy, life in Athens, and then we learn about those barbaric Spartans. We tap in on those Greco-Persian Wars and also learn about Alexander the Great. And I know a lot of you love the uh, Greek mythology. And so speaking of mythology, when we move into ancient Rome, we talk about the myth of Romulus and Remus, and we learn about the patricians and the plebeians and that stinker Julius Caesar. We also learn about their daily life and their eventual decline. And again, how do their lives connect to our lives? All right. We look forward to seeing you next year. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Hi, I'm Jessica Levine. I'm one of three sixth grade science teachers, and I'm really excited about our metabolism unit, where we get to find out all about how our bodies are working on the inside with enough energy to keep us going. 
Hi, I'm Sarah Hufnagel, and I am a sixth grade science teacher excited to meet your students. And I love learning about thermal energy with them because I'm a baker at home and it's a great way to apply those concepts. It's getting hot in here. Hey kids, I'm Mr. Westmoreland. I love learning about weather because I spend a lot of time outside and I need to know when to have my umbrella with me. Yeah. Hi, I'm Miss Mencher, uh, Joanna Mencher. I teach sixth grade math. And at X time, we like to have a good time with our math. Uh, so I've got a dog math joke here. If I have three bones and Mr. Jones takes away two, how many fingers will he have left? Hi, I'm Carrie Kazala. I teach seventh grade math and I've been teaching seventh grade math a very long time. So I have um, some advice for you and I wanna reassure you with some more punny math. Why shouldn't you let advanced math intimidate you? It's really as easy as pie. Hi, my name is Mary Williams and I teach sixth and seventh grade math. And we're gonna continue on with some more fun math puns. Why was the equal sign so humble? He knew he wasn't greater than or less than anyone else. My name's Mr. Sims. I teach sixth grade math and here's my favorite math pun. Are monsters good at math? Not unless you count Dracula. Sixth grade language arts students. My name is Mr. Riedemann and with me is... Hi, incoming sixth graders. I am Miss Carpenter. I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you next year. Hey, Mr. Riedemann. Tell us something about a favorite unit or lesson that we teach in sixth grade language arts. Oh, I'm so excited for all the writing we do, whether it's fiction writing, analytical writing. Uh, we also have some really good hands-on activity to help you with the revision process. Uh, we really break it down bit by bit. Uh, Mrs. Carpenter, Mrs. Carpenter, what advice do you have for incoming sixth graders? I know that sometimes sixth grade can seem kind of intimidating. And one of the best things that you can do is try to stay organized and have good study skills. Um, using time management and using your class time wisely can really help. In addition, having a planner like this one that we give out for all sixth graders um, can also help know what's coming up week and also in the future. Mr. Reedeman, what? Um, tell us something that you really love about sixth graders. I love all the growth. You know, they, they show up as elementary students and they really grow into themselves emotionally, uh, you know, as writers, as readers. It's really great to see. And we're excited, hopefully, for you to grow while reading our book, Ghost Boy. Thank you for all watching. Uh, we'll see you next year. We're so excited. Hey there, Mr. Johnson here representing the tech department. Uh, we also have Miss Amato in the tech department and then Mr. Miller and Mr. Riedemann from other departments come over and help us out when our program is, you know, expanding. Um, this is a basic rundown of the Tech A class, which all sixth graders will take. But I want to let you know, if you love tech, you can sign up to do tech all year. So you do A and B. And of course, in seventh and eighth grade, you can also do it all year. So if you're fully into it, we got you every semester. Um, basics. So we start with digital citizenship. Make sure you're safe online. Then we go to Microsoft Office so you have a good understanding of these different apps. So when you're in seventh and eighth grade, you don't have any issues when your teacher asks you to do this or that. Uh, then we go into the digital side of computers. So we look at binary numbers. We look at languages. We look at RGB and we look at pixels. You'll make some pixel art like you can see behind me. From there, we take apart computers. Then we talk about the internet and we end with programming. It's a whole lot to do. Bye. Hello, I'm Miss Koch and I teach choir at Eckstein. As a sixth grader, you can sign up for introductory choir, which we also call the Eagle Choir. And in Eagle Choir, we sing all types of music and anyone who likes to sing or is interested in singing can join. Looking forward to meeting you. Hello, I'm Mr. Escobedo and I will also be talking for Mr. Smith who uh, teaches orchestras, one band, and a guitar class. Uh, I am, like I said, I'm Mr. Escobedo, and I teach uh, four bands, three jazz bands, a uh, drum line, uh, and I, I want to make sure that you are aware of introductory band and orchestra. Uh, those are classes that need no experience, so you can sign up for that. 
Uh, there's also Premier Band and Orchestra where you just need a little bit of experience and you could sign up for that. There's also Junior Jazz Band that's after school and that's for kids with no jazz experience, but they already play an instrument. We also include piano, guitar, bass, and drums. Uh, and then the last thing is drumline. And I will take sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Right now we have a really robust drumline, and I'll show you their equipment in a little bit. Um, there are three of us here, and the information is on there. There's uh, myself, Mr. Escobedo, Mr. Smith, and Ms. Koch. Uh, also, if you would like to borrow an instrument, the sooner you communicate with us, the better. Uh, we can get you an instrument almost right away. Uh, and then a couple of last things, summer music for band. I also, besides teaching band during the summer, I also will teach jazz at that time. Uh, and the information is on the screen. And the last thing I do uh, for incoming sixth graders, seventh and eighth, uh, is drumline. I'm going to show you now a little bit of the auditorium. I'm going to bring this down so you can see. So here we are on the stage. This is kind of cool. It's a really awesome auditorium. And you're going to see in the background, there's Miss Koch waving. This is where all the audience sits. There's a balcony. Uh, so the whole thing is pretty awesome. Right now, because we're in COVID or pandemic mode, you see all those green dots. Uh, and down there, you see all the percussion. So we have uh, up to five bass drums, four snares, three tenors, and four cymbals. Uh, please contact us as soon as you can, as soon as you want to, and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome to Beginning Visual Art. We get to do so many fun things in my class. We do drawing and painting, design, 3D sculptures, sometimes even sewing. You can see I like to present all my students' work outside in the halls. So fun. I'm going to take you for a little tour into the classroom. Super exciting. Look at how big this room is, which means we get to do big projects, small projects, all kinds of projects, painting, drawing. Come my way and you'll have so much fun. Hi, Mr. W here. I'm representing the Physical Education Department at Eckstein. We also have Miss Norman and Mr. England. So with income sixth graders, everyone's required to take it. Some sixth graders decide to take it all year long. Over the semester, we'll cover many different units and many different games and activities. On the slide here is a pretty extensive list of many of the different units we will cover. Along with that, there's plenty of cooperative games and other little little things that go along with it. We're looking forward to seeing you and we'll get you moving and hopefully you'll have a good time and find something you'll like. Hi, my name is Liz Savage and I teach in the special education department here at Eckstein Middle School. Next year I'm going to be teaching a communications class which is a language arts class for special, uh, for special education students where we follow some of the topics that the sixth grade language arts class are covering with also instruction on reading and writing that fits their IEP. The other thing I'm going to be doing is pushing into the some of the language arts classes where I will be helping some of the sixth grade students with IEPs with their reading and writing also. Um, another thing I'm going to be doing here at Eckstein is teaching a study skills class. Uh, fun fact about me is I play the button accordion for folk dance groups and it's one of my favorite things to do. Thank you very much. Look forward to meeting your student next year. Hello, my name is Anna Ioannidis, and I am the department head for the ELL department at Exxon Middle School. I would like to introduce you to our program. The purpose of the ELL program is to support students academically, socially, culturally, emotionally. Um, we teach the students English or further their English knowledge um in the various subjects taught at Eckstein, especially the core subjects. Uh, we make sure that students feel comfortable. That is a, a very important part of our job 
because they are adjusting to a new culture very often and it's not that easy. We support students emotionally and socially uh, as they learn to be students at Exxon and to make friends and feel like they are part of our community. What the teacher support looks like. So depending on their English level, students could be eligible for an English language arts class for students who are new to the country and who are still learning how to read, write, speak, and understand English. We also have an academic support class for advanced speakers. Um, this class focuses on academic reading and writing um, specifically using academic vocabulary and um, the level is much higher. We also have a grade level language arts class for sixth grade, which is taught by two teachers, a, and, and a language arts teacher and an ELL teacher. And uh, the same is true for two history classes, one at seventh grade and one at eighth grade, um, taught by two teachers. Our teachers currently speak French, Russian, Spanish, and Greek. We also have um, teacher assistants. Um, we have two assistants this year. They speak Spanish, Somali, and Arabic. Assistants typically support students in, um, in the ELL class, uh, in math, and in science. Uh, these assistants are available to communicate with you, with families, about any topic that um, you need support in. And uh, we also translate for IEP plans for special education. To be eligible for ELL services, students must take the WIDA Access Screener. It measures a student's ability to read, write, uh, listening for understanding, and speaking English. In addition, every February or March, students are tested on the WIDA Access excuse me, English test, which measures the same language skills, reading, writing, listening, comprehension, and speaking. And uh, students must have an overall score of five out of six to exit this program. Students take this test annually, yearly, until they um, master the language. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy and hope to see you next time. Hi, my name is Miss Morgan and I'm the registrar at Eckstein Middle School and one of my jobs is to help you guys choose your schedules every year. Each student gets an opportunity to tell Eckstein what they want to take for their electives in the following school year. Sixth graders can choose from one year long elective or two semester long electives. Students will also be given the option to choose a math or a reading support class instead of electives. This process is all done online and through your source page. It will take about 15 minutes to complete and is done in April and May of each year. In April, your family will get an email from me with directions on how to complete this process and where to find the links in the source. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is there at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Hello, my name is Barb DeNormandy and I'm one of the assistant principals here at Eckstein Middle School. I'd like to speak with you briefly about our special education program. We currently have 11 special education teachers and 11 instructional assistants. Some of our instructional assistants or paraprofessionals serve as one-on-ones for individual students. We offer all of the service models available in Seattle Public Schools with the exception of the Medically Fragile program. We also offer OT, PT, and SLP services right here in the building. Sheltered classes at Eckstein Middle School include ELA, which we call COM, reading, and math. These sheltered classes or self-contained classes 
also include life social skills classes and study organizational classes. For the 2022-2023 school year, we will be offering push-in services in both math and ELA. That means that a special education teacher will go into specific gen ed classrooms to provide specially designed instruction for students according to their IEPs. Please watch for information about upcoming spring riser processes. This is an opportunity when special education teachers at Eckstein Middle School speak with special education teachers from your elementary schools and also with students that are going into high school and their special education programs to better understand individual needs. Thank you so much and welcome to Eckstein Middle School. Hi, my lovely sixth graders and families. My name is Meredith Bachtal and I will be your sixth grade counselor. I'm so excited to be part of your next journey since I know the transition from elementary school to middle school can be a mix of emotions to nervousness, and, but also excitement. But I wanna let you know that I will be there every step of the way. We'll do two school tours, help out with lockers, figure out a routine from class to class, all of that. So I don't want you to worry. We'll just kind of guide you along the way. As your counselor, I will help navigate and balance academics, um, social emotional counseling, and even some college and career readiness. My hope is to support you with whatever that may look like, and I, I would love to advocate for your needs the best I can. I have a wonderful team behind me, so you and your families are in great hands. It was actually my first year as a school counselor this past year, but I had eighth graders. But now that I have you, um, the best part is I look forward to growing with you all, all of the three years that you'll be here. With that said, we'll have time to get to know each other. I'll tell you all about my dog, his name is Mochiko, or my love for bubble tea. <laughs> and I look forward to learning from one another. I can't wait to hear all of the things that make you, you. And I will continue um, a partnership while you're here with families and, and our community. So lastly, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to Eckstein. This spring, we will have visits to elementary schools, most probably virtual, but these visits will be meeting with the fifth grade cohorts to talk about what to expect in middle school. We'll talk about all things middle school and have lots of time to answer those all important what happens if questions. I'm excited to be the familiar face for your students to see on the first day of school. We are hopeful that this June we'll be able to have an ice cream social at Eckstein for all of our incoming sixth graders. A chance to meet some staff, meet other sixth graders, and for parents to meet other parents. We hope we'll be able to see you there. Hi, I'm Ms. Sterling. I'm the librarian here at Eckstein, and I love being the librarian. I help students find books, I help uh, make things in our maker space, um, and help you connect with things that you are interested in. We have a bunch of book lists if you look on my library website, um, as well as if you go to the library catalog, which you can get to at tiny.cc slash Eckstein. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye. Hi, I'm also the Web Day Coordinator. Web stands for Where Everyone Belongs, and Web Day is for all incoming sixth graders the week before school to get a chance to meet fellow students and play some fun games and get a tour of the school. Um, there'll be some more details coming in an email and on the website about the exact date, uh, but we can't wait to see you there. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Manzo. I will be the eighth grade counselor next year. I'm wellness department head and one of the things we focus on in the wellness department is the healthy development of the mind body and spirit for every student and even though i could talk to you for an hour about that it would not be good for your mind body and spirit so enjoy the next slide
Our main office staff is always happy to answer any questions or assist you with any need you might have. Ann Peterson is our administrative secretary. She answers the phone, many general questions, works on building use, and uh, also helps with employment of our staff. Katie Ryan is our attendance specialist. She's who you'll receive um, on the other end of an email you might send or a phone call to the attendance office, either excusing your student or perhaps even releasing them early from school. Julia Dieterine is another uh, friendly voice you might hear on the other end of the phone when you call uh, the main office, taking many general questions. And Julia also helps approve and clear any parents uh, or guardians that would like to volunteer at our school. Andrea Drackler is our fiscal specialist and all payments that you will make, such as the purchase of a yearbook, spirit gear, um, donations and such will run through Andrea Drackler's office. And Tony Morgan is our registrar extraordinaire and she does all scheduling for students for their, each of their two semesters at Eckstein, as well as handles all transcript requests. Welcome to Eckstein, home of both the girls soccer and ultimate Frisbee 2021 city champions. My name is Mary Williams and I'm the athletic coordinator here at Eckstein, along with being a full-time math teacher. Participating in middle school sports is a great way to get connected with your school, meet new friends, build some skills, and have some fun. The sport options are shown on the screen and your child can participate in one sport per season. All students are required to complete the sports paperwork that is posted on our website. This includes a physical form signed by your physician. Uh, it's a good idea to get this turned in over the summer before your student comes to, uh, comes to middle school in order to not have to rush around at the last minute. We do have many safety processes in place because of COVID and this you can expect that you, your child will be wearing a mask, um, bringing their own water bottle to practices and games, and for some of the sports, even getting regularly COVID tested. It's great, been great to see our students return to playing sports this year, and I look forward to meeting your child on the field, in the gym, or on the track. Go Eagles! Hello, my name is Joya Port. I'm the leadership teacher and ASB advisor here at Eckstein. ASB at our school stands for Associated Student Body, and interested students uh, apply in the spring to serve on the exec board for one year and sixth grade students who are interested in being a sixth grade rep, they would apply in September for that school year. Uh, these students attend weekly meetings uh, during homeroom with me. They, they approve the budget. They make decisions that enhance our school climate. We support the clubs that are offered here at our school, including Talons, Bike to School, Game Club, GSA, the Spring Musical, the Yearbook, Winter Ski Bus, and we produce the Assemblies, the Eagle News, and the podcast. We stay super busy here. In addition to that, students are welcome to sign up for an elective, uh, which is a semester long leadership class that I teach. Uh, sixth graders are welcome to join it, but it's, um, it's an integrated class, all three grades, and it's, uh, it's really cool. It's one of the only classes that has all three grades intermixed, and they spend a lot of time getting to know each other, and I think it um, does a great job of uh, increasing school climate. Students work in this class on learning about leadership, time management, mindfulness, social media, getting to know classmates through activities and discussions, and spend a quarter learning about the eight essentials of uh, leadership, which is respect, kindness, patience, honesty, humility, commitment, forgiveness, and selflessness. Students also do weekly community service projects and daily dares to improve their own personal character. Uh, you should be seeing these things at home. And students who take this class are then eligible to take leadership two in seventh and or eighth grade. And that is the class that puts on the assemblies, Eagle News, podcasts, Spirit Week, uh, fundraising, and does all of our PR in the halls and on social media. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, say hi to me in the halls. Welcome to Eckstein. Hello, I'm mom to three Eckstein students. I'm also the 2021-22 PTSA president. 
My family's experience at Eckstein has been wonderful, despite the fallout from the pandemic. The entire staff has been united in providing our students the safest learning environment possible. As our students mature to the middle school level, students become valued members of our Parent-Teacher Student Association. Our meetings have been virtual, which has allowed us to showcase student voices and achievements. I am gratified to see young leaders in our student population. We are looking forward to meeting our future Eckstein Eagles and their families. Together, we can build on our dedication to all students' educational success and their physical and emotional health and well-being. See you in the 2022-23 school year. Well, I know that these pictures of Eckstein Middle School don't do our beautiful grounds uh, inside and out justice. Uh, we wanted to just give you a quick little glimpse into our school, both inside and out. The top picture there on the left-hand side of Eckstein Middle School is taken from 75th Street. This is the front entrance of our school. The image top right is our historic auditorium. Those are original seats from the 1950s when Eckstein first opened. And this is a two-tiered auditorium uh, with access points both uh, on the ground level on the first floor and then our balcony is on the second floor of the school. The bottom left picture is of our garden. Students love eating lunch in the garden actually year round. And uh, we've got lots of parent volunteers that come in and help care for our garden and uh, students do as well. And the garden is located right outside the cafeteria. So you see that large bank of windows, uh, that's a cafeteria. So students will get lunch and then walk out and find a place to sit with their friends in the garden to eat. The bottom right picture is that of our front hall at Eckstein. You'll see the nurse's office there, and then down the hall is our main office entry, as well as the attendance office. A few more images from our building. You will see our band room, the gym, one side of the gym. We've got uh, quite a large gym, and we break it into two different sections for our classes. And then you will see a couple of different classroom spaces, both an English uh, language arts classroom as well as a science classroom. And then finally, our Eckstein Library. Well, hey, everybody, thanks for coming. Um, we have representation sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. And um, I, so that you all know, I have hard hitting questions from the people. I'll edit out ums and ahs, and if you say something that's like super stupid, I'll cut it out, okay? All right, but you'll have to let me know what that stupid thing is, otherwise I won't know, and then you'll be like, why didn't you cut that out? These uh, are the questions for students, for fifth graders, so that they get to learn about Eckstein. First question, the first day of school, what could a sixth grader expect on the first day of school at Eckstein? Um, so you can definitely expect to be scared and kind of freaked out. Um, I definitely know I was. It's a much bigger build building than my elementary school. Um, but all the teachers are really nice and they will help you with whatever you need. And my name is Jimmy, I'm in eighth grade. Uh, when you first come to Eckstein, you're most likely going to be greeted instantly and you're going to expect to be nervous. But what's the bathroom situation like at Eckstein? Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm in seventh grade. And from my experiences, I mean, like, you can ex like, it's pretty clean, but like, you will always see like some paper towels maybe on the walls and stuff like that. So, yeah. Could, uh, Anthony, what's the bathroom scene like for the boys? Uh, don't expect them to be clean. What's different about middle school? Well, for me, the work got harder because, especially in math, because I hate math. And so mm -hmm. I've always hated math, so it was always hard for me. Um, so let me ask you this: What's it like then in in middle school with math? Is do you do you have time to work on it? It's a lot more work. What is it about math in middle school that is different, maybe than elementary, or is it just the same as it's been? Oh, well, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Some of it's really complicated. Mm -hmm. Did you find it was easy to get help with your with math from your teachers? Yeah. 
cool. That was easy. Okay. Gabby, what do you think? Different from middle school. Um, hi, my name is Gabby and I'm in sixth grade. Um, I think one of the most different things is having so many teachers. And I found in the first week, I like kept calling my teachers the wrong name. And there are so many different kids. Like you can't like, it, you don't have the same kids in every class. Like you have, you like have so many new people in every single class and it's, um, it's very different, but after a few weeks, it gets to be like normal, mm -hmm. even though it's a lot different from your normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Alana, is that what? What do you think? Yeah, so there's like a lot more classes, and I noticed. Um, I remember in elementary school, I was always like, I want to have homework. Like, I, I want to. I know it's kind of weird, but like, I want to have homework and like turn it at the end of the day, but. I always had no homework so I was like so excited for sixth grade and I was like when when I started in kindergarten I always wanted to be a sixth grader because it was like my dream and like I had like sixth grade posters all over my walls and so Alana, you've really accomplished excited. you've accomplished your dream yeah and um so um I did it but then it was like COVID <laughs> hit and then it was like really hard but oh. there's like a lot more teachers and I found out homework can not be that fun Homework, how much? When do you do it? What advice do you have about homework in middle school? I see Gabby. I think there's not as much of homework as there is just work. And I think once you don't finish your work, that mainly turns into homework is mm -hmm. my experience with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I say that there is a lot more homework in elementary school. We hardly had any homework, like except for an occasional math page, but that was it. And now I've got six times as much. So I'd even say maybe eight times as much. And with all the different teachers all giving you homework. And some classes, they have really light homework. They're just like, do, if you don't get the things in synchronous time done, then it's your homework. But they don't really give homework. And some teachers are like, okay, so do this and this and this and this. And then after that, you can do this. And I'm like, ah. Bad. When you're in the actual school building, um, I feel like they teachers usually give you a lot of time to finish your work in class, even if it's officially homework. So when I get home, I rarely had to do any work. Um, mm. Which was you surprising. In the daytime. You got a lot of it done in the daytime. Yeah, and okay. it was really surprising to me, um, and it felt good just to have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. My advice for homework is go to your friend's house and just get it done. I'll get it done at school before you get home because uh, you have free time. You could study whatever you need to do without homework. extra work. And it's already done at school, so you can just hang out and stuff. The homework buddy it can be really helpful because too you like you know get if you've got questions or they've got questions also get that social energy to get it done um okay here we're 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 we're, we're really running out of time i know they're going to cut us um friends and lunch time so this is obviously for seventh and eighth graders what's cafeteria like how's the food what what's what, what do you do at lunch time I actually haven't had any of the cafeteria food there, um, but there is a courtyard and then a really big lunchroom. Um, you can eat in either of those places. Um, the lunchroom usually is pretty crowded. Um, in the courtyard, uh, there's one park table and then a ton of uh, like gardens that you can sit around. Um, and that's usually not too crowded, so um, I was always sitting in a different spot each day with my friends. Um, and it was just really fun to see the whole uh, courtyard and cafeteria. So, um, Thad, how come you never ate the school lunch? Is this you're going to reveal some secret about it? <laughs> um, I've always just packed a lunch. Um, I've okay. never had a school lunch anywhere. Ever? Yeah, ever. Uh -huh. You've never had this, the Seattle school's nachos? That's my favorite day. Nacho day is the best day. Nacho Day is the best day. My own sixth grader is right over here, and he's saying no, but it is true. Nacho Day. Okay, Rachel, what do you got? Okay, I wait. Okay, um, thank you. I've only had, like, the school lunch once, and I thought it was pretty good, you know, just, mm -hmm. like, a vegetable and fruit and stuff, and then the main course. 
Um, I was also going to talk about the courtyard, and like, yeah. that's where I eat like half of the time, and it's really nice outside. I don't go there in the winter unless it's snowing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember the chicken nuggets that look like little chicken drumsticks? They used to have those in elementary school. You ever had those? They, they, oh, okay. You're all missing out. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad about the school one, but um, <laughs> the best item you can get is a chicken salad or the hot dog that's in my opinion or if like something else i used to just get breakfast and then order lunch and i'll eat the breakfast and the lunch because i would save the breakfast from the breakfast you know what i mean and i would just eat both of it but breakfast is definitely better than lunch like the pizza wait the breakfast pizza have you had the breakfast pizza yeah, the breakfast pizza it, oh my gosh bro. there was this place I, I used to live in Tiger. It's a place in Oregon. There was this place called, it was called uh, Little Caesars. Yep. It's about that. That's what it takes. Okay. Well, sounds like we're going to have to spend some time in the cafeteria eating the food. Um, I'm excited for that for you all. Maybe for me too on Nacho Day. Okay. Last question What kind of classes do you take in middle school? Um, well, in sixth grade, I, some people, I don't, for me, Half the year, um, you have PE. The other half, you have tech. Some people have like both um, in one semester. I don't really know how that works, but um, mm -hmm. and then you have um, you have PE. You have um, math. You have science. You have world history, um, and you have language arts. Those are the required classes in sixth grade is what i know and um mm -hmm. and then you have your elective and i'm pretty sure most of the elective choices is leadership oh so you can do um you can do your elective for half a year and then do another elective for the other half and you can also have one elective for the whole year mm -hmm. i chose um two and i i like that idea for sixth grade because then you can have like you can try more stuff out and it's more like you can meet new people and it's just like more of like different stuff and yeah seventh or eighth graders did you wind up taking a class that you didn't think you would like either an elective or a class and then you're like oh this is different in middle school i really dig it yeah thad what do you got um so in sixth grade i took leadership for half a semester um and i didn't know if i would like it um and i wasn't sure i why i liked that decision um but and honestly i didn't really love the first semester but i'm really glad i did it because now i'm in leadership too it's mm -hmm. really fun um and we're doing some great projects i'm in sixth grade instead of pe i did yoga class and i thought i found that really fun and relaxing had you done and yoga would, before, or did you discover that in middle school? No, I just discovered it. That's awesome. Everyone, I want to say a big, big thank you to you all. Thank you to Anthony. Thank you to Rachel. Thank you to Lucy, Thad, Gabby, Alana, and Jamir. Uh, do you want to wave to everybody on our way out? I'm not even sure how we'll edit this out, but here we go. Okay, bye. Oh, bye. Thank you so very much for listening or watching along with our overview to Eckstein Middle School. We have an incredible student body, a parent community of support, amazing, engaging educators, and uh, I'm so proud and uh, grateful to be leading this uh, incredible community here at Eckstein. Please let us know what questions, concerns you have as you think about this big transition to middle school. Mr. Wires, as you met earlier in the presentation, is going to be the sixth grade house administrator. And I've linked his uh, email address here on the slide. Ms. Bachtel, who you also met, is next year's sixth grade counselor. I've got her email listed for you there as well. And then mine as well as principal. So please be in touch and uh, let us know what questions you have. And again, thanks for your interest in Eckstein and uh, welcome. Take good care, everyone.